Happy Halloween! I am Berlin the Wizard, and we will get to the Jobology podcast in one second, and your host, Brandon. But I'm here to tell you that our guest today is Shannon. She works for the Granger Company. She's a field sales manager. She's going to talk to us all about running a sales team and about that dreaded supply chain. So without further ado, Shannon. Welcome to another episode of Jobology Podcast. Uh, Today I'm here with Shannon. Shannon is a field sales manager um, for a WRO company. Do I have that right? Oh, MRO, Maintenance, Repair, and Operations. Okay. See, that's why I do this, so I can learn right there off the bat that I'm already getting things wrong. Uh, MRO, I was going to ask you what MRO stands for. So thanks for clearing that up. Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess my first kind of question we always like to start with here is I mentioned field sales general or field sales manager. If you were to kind of say what you do or what your job is to just the average person on the street, how would you kind of explain what you do or, um, explain your job title. Yeah. So a field sales manager, um, would be, I mean, I've seen that title across different companies. So I feel like we're probably all doing the generally the same thing is Mm -hmm. I have a team of salespeople and a district you could call it, and they are going out to customers and we have outside sales teams here. So they're going out to customers that, um, we've given a, a package to each person to serve and they get to go out and serve them and make sure that all of the offers of the company and the ways that we can go to market are being uh, taught to customers, being, you know, they're educating them. They're letting them know ways that we can help solve problems. And that's me. My job is to make sure that the sellers are doing what they're supposed to be doing by sharing those offerings and um, taking advantage of every opportunity to grow both sides. So like controlling kind of the team and like making sure everybody's on the same page. Um, Mm -hmm. We'll get, we can kind of get to team, but uh, I'm imagining you are like have a team under you or people under you or like, what does that kind of structure look like? Yeah. So, um, so first I'm with, I'm with a supply chain company and I have a team of sellers under me. So the good old supply chain. Supply chain. supply chain i got questions about supply chain later, i know uh, <laughs> holy all right I'm i should have saved it, it for the end i uh, know you brought it up you already opened the door that's right um yeah it's i mean it's been a wild ride the last couple of years of course mm-hmm. but um you know there's a lot of stresses and day-to-day things that are happening of course you can imagine but we're trying to get the same you know goals met as customers need as any end user needs like they need the stuff right now yesterday mm-hmm and they need it for a good price. And there's lots of things in the environment and economy that are happening that, you know, they're tasked to do. So I have sellers under me and uh, I've been a seller myself. So I promoted nice. to this role a, a few years ago after kind of carrying the backpack and boots on my on the ground in Manhattan yeah. and doing the job. <laughs> wow, nice. So yeah, so you're based out of New York right now, just so we can kind of, you know, have an idea of what part of the country we're talking. Um, so based out of New York, is there... Um, what kind of like products are you so I mean I know you you said MRO but to like a layman like me what is that like what kind of products would that be so we serve any business that's a business you know like yeah. that doesn't make does it even make sense I don't know but I think so as opposed to like private yeah you're not like yeah. coming into my house to sell me something you're going to like right. a com- company to sell them something exactly so it's okay. b2b or business to business sales so it could be healthcare, government, manufacturing, commercial um, segments mm-hmm. uh, of businesses, and we sell everything you could imagine. So beyond like just products of ladders, tools, lights, okay. you know, inside the walls, we sell services and trainings as well, safety solutions, oh. like really beyond a catalog kind of supply chain provider. So, um, okay, so like the the like physical tools around, you know, that would be around you or like the, you know, like desks, sinks, yeah. stuff like that. Or like so today okay. I was in a, yeah, I was in a couple of places where we're, you know, I was in a hotel and then I was in, I was in a couple of hotels and then I was in a property management building. So they run, you know, they have commercial tenants in their building and they're the guys, engineers who are keeping the building running and safety people, et cetera. So they're whatever it takes for them to do their job. 
supply wise or even training wise or even people wise like they're you know they're coming to us like if things are needing to be purchased from outside of their walls okay so not like something that they can just you know dial up and get with something that's like a i don't know bigger scale per se yeah i mean we've saw like machines and lifts and oh, wow. you know, tons of small to big you know anything okay. you could possibly need you see out there in the world construction mm-hmm paper <laughs> it'll be small it could be large yeah because i always that is something that's always i've always wondered about is like how who s- supplies the cranes who supplies the you know the uh safety lifts or all the different things that construction guys are using or different you know um businesses like that so that's interesting to know like oh yeah we that's us we do that um why why get into to field sales manager why get into selling you know mro in general like is there Good what's question. kind of the, the reason on that yeah i ask myself that all the time no. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah and i was in hospitality before this and event management um so totally different concert halls like 20 years of that stuff before this so sales is sales you got to believe in what you're selling but mro is the business, but supply chain is like kind of the industry. Okay. Um, why did I get involved? Someone referred me and said like, this company has great benefits. They are top dog in what they do. They're a global presence. Um, and like helping people solve problems and helping people kind of get their jobs done or like I'm bringing something that's purposeful and meaningful to their, to someone else's day. And that's the kind of work I have to be able to do to believe in it. And so that's kind of, I kind of like just went into this industry, not knowing what it was. It's just like you, like, well, what are you doing? You know, are you selling tools or hammers? Yeah. Or, what is, is it that it? Yeah. easy? <laughs> no. Yeah. So, I mean, we had a insurance agent on last time and he was talking about how part of the reason that he likes doing what he's doing is like helping that, you know, either small business get going and like kind of actualize their dreams and like put it into motion because like, yeah, you have the dream, you have the idea, but then you start realizing like, oh, we need the infrastructure, we need the equipment, we need the insurance for this kind of stuff. And so get helping them get that like start made made him feel good, I guess is the way that he would kind of describe it. Yeah, yeah, it does. It, you can see people really stressed from just taking things off their plate and, mm-hmm. you know, you're not trying to just sell something that they don't need. They need the gotcha. stuff, they need it to, to do their own jobs. Right um how like you kind of mentioned how like the referral and kind of your your path to it but um maybe if you could like give us a little more detail on that is there is it as simple as the how is somebody referred me i went and applied boom got the job yeah um i mean i think it depends on the company and how how easy that is or what the path looks like but for me it was having the sales experience was was you know necessary um, I mean, it was, a. I was applying from California. I had moved back to LA and from Orange County originally. Um, I had moved back to LA and I got this referral and I looked into it. I'm like, wow, I haven't worked with a company yet that has given me all of these benefits and, you know, has all of this to offer. Mm-hmm. So I thought it seems interesting. Let me check and, yeah. um, applied. I had six virtual interviews. So oh, wow. I was like, that's a lot to, you know, a lot of time and commitment in yeah. energy yeah it was, yeah and effort yeah decide to you know is this really for me or is this really what I want and I really wasn't sure to move back to New York for this position that was open with the company that you know I could go back to New York and I wasn't quite done with New York yet at the time um, okay so it's kind of like you know I took a chance on it and they took a chance on me moving me back over there for someone they didn't know and you know it's a risk but I think that I was I was available and ready in my mind to just kind of why not you know like step into the unknown and learn something different Um, it seems like a career kind of place for me not just a transactional job to job kind of like stepping stone it's like an actual landing place yeah like and before the interviews they the hr department was preparing me for what to expect on the interview and i was like are you supposed to be telling me this but this is something that they do as a normal practice to prep and say hey you should answer in star format you know, what's the what situation? That, what's I'm going to, yeah. you're going to have to educate me again here. What's star, <laughs> what does that mean? What's star format? 
Yeah. So on interviews, if you, you can even Google it, STAR is how we expect candidates to respond to questions in interviews. So keep it brief, clear, and concise, right? Like, I don't need to know the whole novel of your, you know, your story, but if you could say S is the situation, what was the situation that you're responding, you know, about the task, what did you have to do? Um, or what was the task to, be, to have to be done? Action, what actions did you take to get it done? And then R, what was the results? What were the results? So not to like make you feel like you're back in the interview, but is there like a quick example or something that, you know, you have off the top of your head that you could be like, yeah, this would be, you know, an actual example that I would have used? Yeah. Um. So I, geez, wow. I mean, I had examples from restaurants and events and you know, things like that. I don't know if I remember it. You know, you get the typical interview questions of how would you handle a customer complaint, blah, blah, blah. You know, it was more intense than that. It was more intense. What have you done to, you know, change a customer's mind or et cetera? You know, what, what was the situation or what was the problem in front of you and kind of how did you solve it? So I don't know, examples from then or even examples from now. No, I, yeah, I get, I get kind of what you're saying. It's like the, it is the typical interview way, but instead of doing the like, well, you know, and tell the whole story of the day that happened and what led to it and what it's like, nope, here was the situation. Here's what I, you know, here's what had to be done. Here's what I did. And here's what the resolution or result was. Exactly. Because sometimes people answer and they don't give the results. It's funny. They don't close this deal. They don't close you hiring them they don't tell you what happened or what they did it was kind of like speak to your strategy we really believe in like how did you get that done and it just not happened on the way to happen in itself you could have been sleeping and it would have happened you had nothing to do with the success of it you know so what did you do to make it successful is more the key and what we're looking for like shine a light on yourself yeah like okay i like that um is there like an educational path you have to take to, to get to this? Or is it more like experience-based? You don't have to have any experience in as, as far as coming to the company or even, you know, I'll say like coming to sales that of course they want sales experience, but we've hired people without it. Um, if you were going to do an operations job here, we've hired people without the experience. It's more, it's the qualities, it's the um, principles of the person, the way that they've strategized in the past, like in their examples that they've given. So maybe you have someone that's really tenacious and a go-getter, like you can tell that they're proactive in the in just the way that they're showing up to you prior and during the interview, the way that they're, you know, their examples are kind of portraying them and how they went about reaching goals. Um, so you can kind of tell like, okay, well, this person's worth it. It doesn't have, there's no path that's, you know, necessarily like has to be a, a degree or you have to have been in sales or you have to have been in supply chain. Absolutely not. Most of us did not have anything to do with supply chain before this company, you know? So you get all of the skills and resources and so much training, robust training and, and help around you just like, in an, especially in a sales environment, like it can be really competitive normally at other jobs, other companies. But we're very like we come together and try to help that person with getting all the knowledge they have need and feeling like they can go to us at any time. Their own, you know, t team members, other sellers, like they're not competing against each other; they're helping each other. Gotcha. Okay, so it's not like you know, if hey, I'm on the team and somebody else is on the team and they're going to sell, that's taken away from my, you know, my money or my income. It's like no, I, you got your territory, I got my territory. You know, we're doing our own things. Okay. Separate companies. Yeah. Yeah, I like that better. I like that because it that kind of fosters the growth of the team as opposed to, you know, hey, mm, I don't really want to help them because, you know, you're going to eat into my salary, like my money. So no, but I like that being able to kind of foster, like I said, that growth. Um, uh, something that I find interesting or I've found with a lot of different people is like sometimes, you know, having that blank slate where the person comes in with just the right attitude and then they go, cool, we're going to mold you into the kind of salesperson or the kind of, you know, whatever it might be we want seems to work better than the person that comes in that goes, well, I went to school and I have all this and I, this is how I do it. Da, 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 da. And they're like, well, you're not really going to mesh. Um, is that something that you as a team leader, as a, you know, team manager that you find is that you'd rather have that, 
you know, enthusiastic attitude, but able to mold kind of your own way or help? Or is it like better for the person to come in and be like, Hey, I don't really need you. I'm gonna go do my own thing. I think there has to be a healthy balance. You know, I think that I've, I mean, I've hired people who are really green with sales. They didn't, they, and they never had a professional sales title, but they're very hungry and they have all of the right, like, you know, just go get them and slow down to like strategize and like go out with a purpose. Don't just show up as a professional visitor, but have a purpose. You're taking people's time away from their job, right? So I have that like where I can mold them and they, they're they hungry to learn, they're coachable. And then you have people who are more experienced on my team too, but yeah, you're right. Sometimes they don't wanna change some, and most of them do. Like most of them do want the coaching or understanding like, okay, well, there's another way to do it. We're not asking you to invent, reinvent the wheel or we're not telling you how to sell you know, as in general, but like, you need to know how to sell these products or these solutions and services. Otherwise you're not going to, you know, succeed. So be open. (laughs) Gotcha. And it also, I mean, I've found this just from, I mean, I've had many jobs until this point. And something that I've found is if you are, it's knowing your, your customer too, who you're trying to sell to, because, you know, you might go in, you know, if you're going into a hotel chain versus a restaurant versus a, you know, whatever it, kind of different, you know, different styles, different people, different time that they have. So it's like, you have to be cognizant of all of that. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's the more, you know, the better, because it takes an, it, you're showing that you take an interest in who they are, what they do, why, what they're graded on, what are their, you know, pain points of the day? Like who, if you don't know what they're buying from you already, that's pretty sad. Yeah. They have a question about the product and you're like, Oh, I don't know. It's like, well, you're wasting my time, dude. Like, come on, pick it up. Okay. Got that. Right. Like, or find Uh someone who does know, like, it's okay to not know everything. Like, that's a huge, huge thing. That's uh, my favorite. I mean, not to get too off topic here, but one of my favorite teachers ever was a teacher that instead of either giving you an answer that you knew was like, you just came up with that off the top. Like, you don't know if that's right. You're just trying to get (laughs) me to be quiet. Uh, Was the teacher that would go, you know what? I don't know that answer. Let me look it up and I'll come back to you tomorrow. And then they would come back tomorrow and be like, hey, here's what I found. Here's what, you know, this is what I've researched. You know, what do you think? And that was so much more as a student. And I can imagine as a customer being like, okay, they actually care. They're taking the time, you know, they didn't forget about me. It wasn't something that was in one ear out the other. Um, So that makes sense that, yeah, that would be, be helpful. Yeah. Because you're also paying attention and it's like, you you know, you're really going to do it. Now here's the key is like, you have to actually do it and execute on coming back in a timely manner and giving them what they need because that you'd be surprised like if someone's not doing that and they get off track that's that you lose credibility faster than when you didn't even have the opportunity in front of you to help them because now you did and you didn't show up and you're building a bad name you know you're building this unfortunate thing you have to go back and repair (laughs) yeah and it takes i mean it takes so long to build that confidence and that second to break it where do they go? Oh, all right. Well, there goes that. There's, it's so true. They remember you the one thing that you did, you know, wrong. Of course. And not the million you did right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, that seems to be something across all fields that I'm starting to find out that is, yeah, a very common theme of like, Hey man, you got to, yes, if you mess up, own up to it. Cause that'll also get you out of the doghouse faster than if you're like, well, no, 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 it's X's fault or this reason or that reason. Just being like, Hey, I messed up. Let me fix that for you and then fix it. You know, you can get that second chance. Um, Big part of the podcast that I think is important and that I really find interesting is um, I feel like a lot of people have the idea of what someone's day looks like. If I, you know, if I said, you know, what do you you think a postman does or what do you think a, you know, garbage man does or whatever? Everyone has an idea of what they do. But if you actually try to break it down, nobody really has an idea what other people do. Um, So what does an average day look like for a field sales manager? Um, like what times are you starting? What time are you ending? Are you ever ending? You know, what, what, what does that kind of look like? Yeah. I got exhausted just thinking about that question. Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I'm going to go back to work after this call. Like, oh, geez. Um, okay. No, no, no. So, I mean, in the, off, in the like workday world of, yeah, my job is technically eight to five. No, I mean, I'm a salary. Everyone's, you know, who has salary. Of course, there are definitely work-life balance things that you need to respect and boundaries that you need to have. And I try to have that with my team unless there's an emergency. Um, 
or they're reaching me out to me for something. But for me, I start the day off, you know, like 730. I, I don't, I try to have that. I wake up, you know, meditate, pray, and I have like a, a whole routine in the morning. Um, to kind of get your mind right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so then I start like 730 is the earliest I'll go. And maybe I'll get on my computer and check into the, you know, the CRM system we have, which is a customer relationship management system. Um, so we manage all of our pipeline and our contacts and our events, our meetings, everything like that. I kind of check it out, see what's going on, um, see if there's any emails. Are there any emails that are on fire, urgent things I need to check? You know, I check all my technology. Um, I touch base with anyone that it's, you know, is critical to kind of set the tone with for the day, whether it's a team member or an internal resource or supplier. Um, and I'm mostly focused on the people throughout the day. So, you know, the urgency I pay attention to, I'm checking my emails throughout the day within, whether I'm in the field or I'm at my desk, I'm checking to make sure that I'm looking for urgent requests or needs that need immediate attention. So Mondays and Fridays, I'm typically trying to, you know, plan and help my team out by being available and sitting, you know, and just also working on all of the the data and things that we need to be increasing um, activity on or, you know, doing better with help. Where, where can I help with coaching? How can I talk to business or partners and resources that we need to like address business situations? Those are Mondays and Fridays kind of work. Uh, Tuesday through Thursday, I'm usually in the field with one of my team members and that could be New Jersey, Connecticut, Queens. Statland, New York City, whatever, Long Island. Okay. So all yeah. the, you know, the East Coasty area. Um, New York Metro and trying to meet customers so that they can have that leader level presence and support. And I'm trying to help my people understand and see, leading by example, like what they could be asking, how they could be approaching it, and what customers just kind of need that attention from someone to show that, that, you know, we care and I'm making my way out to you. I have a thousand accounts and then I wanted, I wanted to come here today to see you. Gotcha. Do you find it easier to close a sale in person than, uh, I don't know, electronically? Heck yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about that today. Like it's so much more fruitful to be in front of people because you get, you can walk around, you observe, you build a relationship a hundred times over. Like I would say, yeah, you can't do the same thing virtually. Yeah. And it's a lot easier for the other person to be distracted virtually. I think, you know, if I, you know, if we're talking and you're saying I'm on the phone with you, it's easier for me to be doing other things. Whereas if you're actually there in person, I got to, you know, okay, I got to give you my attention. I'm here, you know, yeah, a little more present. And you can meet instead of being in the, you know, can you're being contained to just this meeting with you and I mm -hmm. here on this meeting. If I were walking around a building or asking for introductions to other departments or contacts, like I'm yeah. being personable, I'm bringing me and I can only do that so much on a screen with whoever is just in the room, you know? Right. Yeah. Cause you don't know what, yeah, you can't, you, that's an interesting point. I didn't think, I've never thought of it that way. Like, yeah, that does, you know, you walk through, Hey, Hey, Hey. And kind of mm -hmm. build rapport with other people or at least even with the person you're talking to build rapport like oh hey they're personable they're saying hi to everybody okay yeah. i get that drives energy too drives good you know momentum yeah <laughs> is are you working from home or is there like a office that you have to go into is that uh mondays and fridays i work from home or I can go to the branch if I want. There's a branch maybe 40 minutes from me. So mm -hmm. it's up to me. Sellers do the same thing. They can kind of manage their own schedule as long as they're meeting the minimums. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can work from a branch. You can work from your house whenever, whatever is best for you. So I don't micromanage people. I don't want to be micromanaged. And That's as long fair. as they get the job done in the environment that they can and need to, then the same for me. My boss is very, very, very good with just letting me do it my way. Nice. That's, I found also that that seems to be what most people prefer and how most people feel successful is like, I don't need a babysitter. I don't need somebody, you know, constantly, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Where are you, you know, where are you going? What's this? You know, it seems a little bit more of the, the more freedom, the more successful in mm -hmm. my experience. So oh far. yeah. Happier morale. Like, you know, yeah. just feeling like you can find your own way. Sometimes you need to stumble too or yeah. pivot and change things, but you need to learn on your, on your own, just like a kid. Like uh, my mom told me that three times, but I guess I'll do it now because it really hurts. Yeah. It's not working. <laughs> right. Right. Or the, like you touch it, you don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I can only tell you so many times. Don't touch the stove. 
okay t- uh, well all right i learned that's hot now yeah. you know that kind of okay sounds like a personal experience brandon no uh heater but yeah <laughs> um yeah i was stood a little i would always get out of the shower cold and stand a little too close to the heater mom's like too close to the heater you're too close to the heater too close to the heater and one time burned my butt and, and oh yeah, well you know that's the not yeah, yeah not okay it'll do it uh um, traumatic <laughs> yeah it can't be for sure as a little kid definitely um so that's kind of like what a typical you know average day is there like a typical ending time or is the hey it can be 10 o'clock at night and if somebody's needs something i've got to be available in the world of like emails being on your phone i feel oh, yeah. that i could i can turn my computer off at 5 5 30 mm-hmm. like my day's supposed to end at five if you're thinking about you know where should minimum be working eight to five um how, how many days have ended at five well most of the time i'm responding by email later in the evening as well, you know, because if it saves me time tomorrow and I don't want to do that, but if I'm, I also want to be present with my husband. I want to be present with, you know, just enjoying my time. So I try to make sure that the phone's not near. That's not always the case or that my attention is somewhere else. So I can, it's going to be there tomorrow, right? (laughs) Exactly. Well, yes. I mean, and yes, in the ideal situations, but sometimes, you know, people feel like things are more urgent than they typically are um, or that they actually are. Uh, so not no real ending time. Um, how do, you know, you mentioned work-life balance. How do you try and manage that? Cause it doesn't, from the outsider's perspective, doesn't seem like it's the easiest thing in the world to manage that in your position. Yeah. Um, well, I, do, I think because I also speak loudly on it with my team and even my peers who try to reach me after then, you know, I say, can we, is this urgent? Can we speak about it tomorrow? If it's urgent, of course you have my attention, but if not, let's, can this wait till tomorrow? Um, but I actually, like, I have a schedule of going, you know, to yoga on Monday evenings. Like it's my job. Like I get to go to that. Yeah. Kind of, um, a couple of nights a week, I go to certain things that I've committed to and it's exciting because I get, I get to, or I'm forced to kind of leave everything else on the side. Um, it's like scheduled fun. (laughs) <laughs> scheduled fun and yeah. you know separation from work or mm-hmm. stress I have to say though like my brain is ready to go at 11 p.m when I'm laying down and like what can we do and think about right now and I'm not alone in this there's many out there but like I'm working yeah. I feel like from 10 to 12 at night in my mind because I'm thinking about all the things that I could have done better or I could do better tomorrow or what's still on my plate oh I didn't you know I need to organize this like so gotcha yeah no i i get that i mean even with my little you know rinky dink podcast we got going here uh same kind of deal like i mean it goes constantly of like okay where should i be focusing my energy where do i need to be posting what do we need to be worried about you know getting new new guests all that stuff so yeah i mean it's for people that are like that it's tough to shut it off Mm -hmm. Um, but at least in those moments to me and i don't i mean i can only speak for me it doesn't seem like work. It seems yeah. kind of like therapeutic to me or like, you know, oh, like I'm bettering myself. So it's not necessarily like I'm right. working and have to be focused on something. It's my own choice that I'm doing that. Yeah. You're excited about it. And also I think like if you're taking time to do other things that are going to, you know, going to nourish your soul, like or mm-hmm. or you're thinking about other things that are exciting about work or you know, you're going to be better for doing that or taking time away because you come back and you're recharged or you, you know, something came to you in that time where right. it might not have been because you were busy on a task, just focusing on it. And now you're just kind of open and receiving, you know, yeah. you have the free time to kind of think of more abstract ideas than such concrete things. Yeah. Sometimes I cry at the end of, well, every time. Okay. Every time I cry at the end of yoga. No. oh i thought you were gonna say every time i cry at the end of work i was like oh no no i also cry every friday afternoon from all of the week's blunders no, no just... not that no good tears <laughs> Dave. sometimes that physical release is what's necessary i mean that's gotta right get, gotta get all that out to start over and start fresh yeah um, healthy. healthy i agree i agree um we're gonna is there so is pay is your pay structure or your pay range related to how well your team does or is it completely independent from that 
Yeah, part of it is. It's uh, okay. partially, you know, I'm, I'm gold off of how well they do or and how many people on the team do well and exceed their goals. So if three out of 11 are at goal, that doesn't really help me. And yeah, well, and it doesn't, ref- yeah, it doesn't reflect doesn't necessarily the best. Right. Yeah. Because then it's like, well, what could I have been doing better? Should I have been out there more? Should I, gotcha. Okay. Um, and then if you want to say, I don't want to talk about this, let's pass. I'm totally okay with that. If you're, you know, want to give us an exact number, that's fine too. But is there a pay range you can kind of like say for your position or your, you know, job, uh, I know that, you know, obviously being in New York is going to be different than if you're in Kansas or if you're in California or if you're, you know, yeah. international. Um, but is there like a range that you could provide? I don't have a range because I think it depends on, um, it does definitely, like you said, it depends on the market. Yeah. But you could look at, you know, sites like Glassdoor and sure. see stuff like that. But um, I think it also depends on the experience and merit increases. You know, there's a few factors going on. I mean, so it depends on your team pay. too. Yeah. Hey, it, you know, it's, I mean, they're pretty much, it's it's built upon merit increases and goal how much they you know it's total compensation so we don't just mm-hmm. think about salary as sales we think about the bonuses and commission and the good thing about my company is that it's there's no cap so you nice. can make as much as you, money as you want and that's kind of up to you if you didn't make as much as someone else and you kind of know that like that's kind of up to you because you have the ability to go as far as you want to go nice Oh, that's cool. So it's salary plus, you know, goals, bonuses, commissions, all that. It's, you know, it's not just strictly base salary or just strictly right. commission. Okay. That, and then also the the rewards and benefits and things that, I mean, for example, I'll share something not really vulnerable, I guess nowadays, but, um, you know, like for therapy, I can mm-hmm. do a therapy session under my medical plan for $10 for 55 oh, wow. minutes. Like it's amazing, you know? <laughs> there's tons of benefits like that that also roll into the whole value of working for our company and what you get so yeah that's actually a perfect segue into my next day my next question here okay. is um <laughs> perks and benefits so i mean typical like i'm assuming medical dental 401k all that jazz um something that i find interesting or that i like to ask about is is there I like to call them a hidden perk. Um, you kind of mentioned it maybe with, you know, ther- the therapy sessions or stuff like that, but is there like a hidden perk to your job? That's not necessarily spelled out. That's not, you know, Hey, the medical dental, but like something that, you know, you're like, Oh, I really enjoy this. Like, this is something that maybe not every job has, or maybe not everybody gets to experience, but I do because it's, you know, what I call a hidden perk. Yeah. I think one t- one thing that's most important to me is vacation time, like PTO. Um, we have floating holidays, so we have, you can use it for whatever you want. You know, I think they're very competitive with that. Like I, I worked at places where for 10 years or seven years that I had the, you know, two weeks vacation the whole time. And I don't even know how I lived off of that, but now, you know, I walked into this company and immediately they doubled that, you know? So I think that's important to me. It's not necessarily something that's spelled out, but, um, there's tons of ways. I think the 401k, of course, there's, there's things I didn't know or wasn't aware of or didn't care about before this because it wasn't something I was familiar with or ever was brought to me and offered. So yeah, I yeah. think the wellness piece is really important and you know, maybe even rewards like recognition. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a whole recognition site that we have that you can get you know we can get concert tickets or travel or there's travel programs like sales you can qualify for a yearly trip next year if you get into the top percentages of of sales then you get to go to maui you know so they do fun things like that not too shabby okay (laughs) take that yes and then this week i even went to um like i have development opportunities At, at our company we're very big on developing people internally and there are so many ways to network and ex- get exposed like um, across the whole country, right? So I'm in New York. I'm in, I don't want to be siloed just to people in New York. I'm in a generational business group where I help lead the events team and, and all of our virtual events. I interview senior leaders across the company to kind of 
talk about generations across the workplace. Nice. And I just went to Chicago this week um, for a couple of days to kind of lead an event there in person. And that was really fun. That's like those kind of opportunities that I wouldn't, that are not my daily job, you know, right. that also motivate right. me. Okay. This is an amazing experience. Like I get to do other things and, yeah. and it's not my daily job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, talking about PTO and vacation, I mean, that kind of ties back into work-life balance of, you know, Hey, if I only know I have two weeks and I'm working the rest of the other 50 weeks out of the year, there's not as much work-life balance where if you can, you know, kind of maneuver that around the way you see fit, you know, put an extra holiday in here, a couple extra days there, you know, turning that two day weekend into a five day weekend, if you do it right. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely something that I could see that would be pretty beneficial. Um, we touched on job hierarchy, but, um, you have a team under you has how many team members again? 11, 11 team members. It's a lot of people to keep track of. A heck of a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. A lot of personalities. A lot of issues that can arrive arise in a day. Yeah. I mean, um, and then from you, are you like part of a team that reports to somebody, or do you just have a singular person that you report to? I do report to my vice president, and I have maybe 12 other peers next to me that are doing the same role as I am across the whole East Coast from Maine to Florida we are under one leader and then he reports to another leader who's over the entire East coast of, across different segments. Wow. Um, yeah. And so, you know, what's nice about this is that I remember I'm not in charge. I don't want to be in charge completely. And I'm not like going to break the world or the company if I make a mistake or, Hey, I need that support. I can, I have leaders. I have support. Right. Right. It's not all on your shoulders. Yeah. Thank God. That's yeah. That, that's also somewhat of a hidden perk, you know, Hey, I got people that can help me. I got people, resources I can reach out to that. And it's not, you know, a competition against either. Like we were mentioning. Yeah. Before. Oh my gosh. Healthy competition, friendly. There's always competition in sales, but true, 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 true. That's a good way supportive. of putting that. Yes. Yes. Supportive <laughs> competition. It's not something I'm completely used to. Supportive <laughs> competition. I know. Uh, right. That's what it's an oxymoron. Yeah. That's a, yeah it's interesting. Um, do you, if you were to have a new salesperson join the team um, or a new, you know, kind of co whatever the, you know, some person as you, but maybe a different territory, is there a piece, like a piece of advice that you would give them um, starting out? Yeah. Um, I would say be gentle with yourself and allow yourself the space to learn and to receive things as they come, you know, in the moment of when they, when you need it, it'll be there. You can ask for help and you can learn it at that point that you need it. You don't have to learn everything up front. You don't have to know everything up front, but you do need to raise your hand when you need help and you need to just sit back and embrace the process of not knowing everything right away. You know, yeah, it can be tough. I mean, I am the kind of person that if I'm not, if I don't feel like I'm good at something, I want to quit right away. I don't yeah. like the, you know, I don't want to work through the struggles, but I get now through a lot of talking to a lot more people that, Hey, that's not really going to work. It's kind of where the magic happens too. Like you build so much character and yeah. learning through struggles because you're depending on something other than yourself. Like I can't, you know, I can't do this alone. So like I need to reach out either physically or just tap into some higher resource that's going to be walking you through and going, Hey, you're not like king of the world. So yeah. don't worry. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not rocket science for some people it is, but mm -hmm. we're not doing that here. And yeah. And I tell them too, like, it's going to take a year or a year and a half for you to navigate this company, but you, you know, your attention just needs to be on receiving it, studying it, understanding it and asking for help or saying, telling us what you need, you know, like but that's that. your responsibility. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's something again, that I've heard from a lot of different people of like, don't be afraid to ask for help. It's okay. Like, you know, we've all been in that sit position, ask away, but you know, the, the silent, I can do this head that, you know, doesn't necessarily work. Sometimes you got to be able to be amenable to, to help and outside assistance. Um, is there something, a piece of advice or something you would change on your personal path. So if you could go back in time to Shannon day one of starting this job and you know, the whole path that's going to happen and everything that's going to happen to this point, is there something that you would tell yourself personally on your own kind of path? Yeah, I think I'm still telling myself this to a degree is 
don't take it personal. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's not about you. And everything is teaching me something. You know, every person is a teacher. And the people that are the toughest are the ones I'm learning patience and tolerance with. And I'm supposed to have compassion for everyone. I'm supposed to do my job and be not be afraid of people pleasing and just get things done and keep people accountable, myself accountable. So mm-hmm. it's like, have courage, have strength, have power and believe in why they chose me because nice. that's why I should choose me. Like, why am I doubting myself? That's a good, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Like, hey, they they obviously see something in me. Why can't I see that within myself? Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's a good, good way of putting that. Um, I have a couple questions related to supply chain, favorite topic. <laughs> Um, so, I gotta go. This is yeah, know, kind of right? running over. Oh, this yeah. is running long. We gotta get out of here. Um, <laughs> can you, in basic, just tell me because I don't know and I hear it a thousand percent. Like I hear it a thousand times a day. What is what is the supply chain? What is supply chain? Like why is it so crucial to everything? Why is everything now more expensive? Because what I got a million. I tell me, yeah. please. Yeah, you sound stressed. Are you waiting yeah. for something in back order? No. Well, <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, I've heard of my Halloween costume, but hey. Oh man, that's a drag. That's the drag. Um, so yeah, supply chain. If if you think about it, like things have to be produced and made and manufactured. So it starts there. It starts with the manufacturer. If there are problems with labor at the manufacturer or a line down, like their their equipment, or maybe even a little tiny part, you've heard of like the global chip problem, like mm-hmm. maybe. There's a chip and it's inside a tool or, you know, inside of a a piece of equipment that they can't manufacture this until they have that little tiny part, for example. And so if the manufacturer is delayed for any of those reasons or others, you know, maybe they don't, they're short of staff too. Maybe who knows, right? Right. What's what's going on. But um, it goes from the manufacturer that affects the next, you know, the, the carriers, the carriers who are bringing it from the manufacturer maybe on boats, maybe on land to the end um, customer and consumer. So whether it's a consumer or a business, but the end user. Um, so it's like a chain of supplies, if you think about it, just it. simply yes. going from manufacturer to carriers, to companies, distributors, um, or and consumers like you, you know? Okay. So, and why is it, you know, why is it still going on? I think there's there's tons of little chips <laughs> there's a lot of chips not the good kind with guacamole but i know right like give me a chip already um but you know <laughs> just like you know the things that are that are slowing us down or maybe the docks are busy and i see i live in a place where i can see the boats in the ocean sitting there there's like 15 at a time just not moving it seems you know day after day and they're waiting to get to the docks. The docks are short of laborers as well. Um, they're short when they pick up from the truck to go to the the branch or the distributor, or the customer's house or whatever they're doing. You know, so there's a lot involved, and people don't see that. And it feels like sometimes that you know when you talk to people about there's back order. It's two weeks from now. It's three weeks. Um, they're like, what? What do you mean? What's happening? You know, it's like, have you been around for a couple of years? You know, you're watching yeah. the news. Maybe not, but um, most, for the most part, I think we're pretty good. And our company is like very much well-stocked. We've, we take, we have a big hand in the supply chain. We're a big beast of a company. So that's the good thing. But if there is a global chip problem or something that there's, that's going to affect everyone, no matter doesn't who really you are. Matter. Yeah. Unless the guy down the block is selling at black market. I mean, you are in New York. I'm sure there's somebody that's down the block selling black market chip. You have to know what you're buying is going to be the level <laughs> well, of quality that you're seeking through that. That's true. I guess, I guess if it's for your own personal use, you can kind of, you know, figure that out. But if you're doing it on a, you know, massive commercial scale, yeah, you can't really go to, you know, yeah. all kinds of reasons. <laughs> is supply chain, like, I feel like, and I mean, you can dispel this or confirm this is it like i feel like it's a scapegoat a lot of times like that's just the quick answer for people to give like you know why is everything so much more expensive supply chain why is everything taken you know why can't i get the supply chain what you know and it's as opposed to like you know maybe kind of like you just did explaining it out of like no this is this is why i feel like it's a quick easy scapegoat right now yeah no you're 
you're right. You're right. I think a lot of it, depending on the individual or the company, like if they don't know how to tell the story or they don't know the story themselves, then that's their answer. Or sometimes it's just, it has maybe has nothing to do with it. And you're right. Some situations people are saying, oh, that's what the case, that's what the case is because they're not digging in to find out, like, did we call that manufacturer and see what the actual problem is? Um, maybe it's not supply chain related. Maybe it's just, you know, a line is down <laughs> at mm, their, yeah. their, their equipment's down and they have a labor issue. I mean, and you could take that supply chain reason and just like, yeah, well, because of the supply chain I have less labor, you know, it's really, if, as long as more, the more, you know, the more you can explain it. And I would say challenging the person on, well, what about the supply chain? You know, well, what about, you know, what about it? Like, is it, where is it sitting? You know, and I understand, are there alternates? Like we can go either ways too. Like our company, we can have, you know, there's alternates. If you're not married to that brand, we can get another brand. If they have it. Yeah. And if, and that will tell you, like, if that supplier may not have purchased a lot, and maybe that's why they're waiting for so long, because they haven't purchased a lot for their shelves to sell it. So you maybe go to another supplier and they have it because they have it on their shelves. Right. Because, yeah, the whatever, when they ordered and everything like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. See, you're enlightening me already. I already <laughs> feel like I know supply chain. I can start, <laughs> you know, answering other people's questions. We're like, supply I'm like, no, 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 just wait. I will tell you. Um, as a customer, let's, let's say, for example, I'm one of your customers, how can I be better to the field sales manager and then the field sales people? Like, what can I do personally to make your job easier? Well, you should trust me. <laughs> you have to earn trust to build credibility, but I would say be willing to partner. And like, if you're working with a supplier or distributor like my company does, we are, then we're trying to do the best for you. And we're doing a lot of work on the back end that you don't see. So if you could partner with us and give us as much information as you need, as you know, you know, or need, or patience and understanding, like, hey, if I bring this to you, there's other opportunities that we can grow together on. I can also help you with. Am I earning more business? by having done this reduction in price or by having done this, you know, stretch work for the next three hours, I'm trying to get it to you sooner through the channels. Um, what are we going to do? What's in it for me? You know, what's in it for me with them, the whole sale, sales thing. And, you know, tell us like what your business motives are. What are your personal motives? Like, why does this matter? You know, the more yeah. that we know each other, we're not just transactional. And hey, don't talk to me about the digital suppliers who are only selling like, you know, digital supplies. They don't have people boots on the ground of people walking around the, the city or to help you in person. Because there's nothing that beats a human connection and relationship. And we can offer that. So I'd say don't compare us to the, you know, don't compare the people that are bringing you value and solutions in ways that are personable and helping you save time or stress to the people that are just online because you're going to compare to price all day long, you know? If it's, yeah, if it's just price is the bot, then I, why am I even here? Well, you know what I mean? Just find the lowest one and go with it. Yeah. But if it's a connection or, you know, if I have a question, I can call you right away. I don't have to go through, you know, an automated system to finally get to a person or something like that. That makes sense of like that building that human connection, like you said. Yeah. Um, we all go to like our favorite pizza shop. That's double the time and in, in distance than, you know, and then the, the, the malls or whatever it is that you want to go to because you like it. Yes, it's further out, but I'm spending more gas. I'm spending more money probably, you know, because I'm going to go to the one I like and you're going to get what you get out of whoever you go to. So what is it that you're getting? Yeah, this is New that's York a good City. day. <laughs> that's okay. That's part of the, it's part of the whole experience. That's right. Um, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I get that of, you know, Hey, I, I would rather I drive 30 minutes to get my hair cut when there's barbershops right down the street, but I want to go to the person that I like, that I feel comfortable with, that I know is going to do a good job. And so, um, yeah, I get that. That's a, a very concise way of putting that. Um, the last part of the podcast that I have here is I always like to give my guests a little bit of their own time to either promote, you know, their own business, a side business, somebody else's business, a cause, a, you know, charity, a whatever, or just something that you want to bring people's attention to. Um, so if you, if there's anything like that, now's your time. Um, I work for Granger, So it's a big supply chain distributor. Um, 
largest in safety and largest MRO distributor in the world. And um, we we work with a lot of, you know, big names out there and everything. So I'd say that, you know, it's been an honor working for them so far. And um, what I would say is for leaders and for people who are, you know, salespeople, um, using LinkedIn has really helped me to network and understand like what I can learn from others out there. So I'm learning always on LinkedIn. I'm making connections. If I haven't gotten in the door somewhere, I'm trying to personally meet someone on LinkedIn, you know, through a message or, Hey, I'm your local person. I'd like to, you know, form that relationship. And, 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 and you get to kind of, you know, find good talent that way as well. Um, it's great. It's a great tool. So I would say embracing platforms that can be good for both ends and, and it's something I care about. I mean, uh, I care about a lot of things. I care about the environment. I care about the, you know, the climate and I care about, um, uh, kids and like just supporting the charities and things like giving back, just being generous with, you know, things that are meaningful to you that kind of break your heart. You know, there's things that break my heart and a couple minutes or seconds of it being on or in front of me, I'm just glued and I'm like, okay, yeah. what can I do? Get you on the old hard strings. Yeah. Yep. We're so fortunate. So I think being of service like is, you know, um, is really helpful to the soul and it gives back time when you don't think you have time. So. I mean, that's kind of, you know, I wanted to start the podcast, like I said, to, to learn more about people's jobs, what they're doing, but I also the idea of giving people a platform to, you know, share their own personal things or their own thing of what's going on or their own, you know, cause. I, I love that. So um, that is all I have. Uh, I'd like to just thank you again for being on. Um, I really appreciate yeah. it. Uh, and you. yeah, thanks for being a, being a great guest. Absolutely. Thank you for being a great host. I'm excited about this podcast. I've been watching you. So oh, appreciate it. <laughs> uh, we'll see what I, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you never know. Um, no, but, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Shannon, and thank you, Brandon. I am your wizard, Berlin, and I want to remind you guys all of a couple things before you leave. First off, have a safe and happy Halloween. Secondly, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow at Jobology Podcasts on all major social media platforms, and check us out on TikTok. We're on there too. And like we say, to end every episode, make good choices. Mm -hmm.